Nelson. Here. Tom Kuhn. Here. Emily Lee. Here. Andrea Anderson. Okay. Aaron Aaron Aaron. Excuse. And Aaron Thank you. I'm here. I will stand for the pledge.
Um, so we should probably have a discussion on the last day of school at this point. Um, you know, essentially, a week is a week is a week, and this is how the calendar worked out with our one snow day that ends up being a Monday. Um, I know that my personal viewpoint, and we can talk about that a little bit, is that you know I hate to lose I hate to lose any time that, that is real you know, that, that's meaningful instructional time. But what do other people think about that? And, and Bob, please feel free to join the conversation. Like this just happens to be the way it worked out. You know, if it, if it was a Tuesday, we'd be giving up two days. But it was a Wednesday at some point. Yeah, at some point. Bob. Your schedule is 177 student days uh, as it stands this year, which uh, it limits us a little bit as to the contact time we have with kids. So I, I agree with Judy, I hate losing any kind of contact time in days that needs to be a last day of school at some point, somewhere. We've had a number of delayed openings this year that also uh, lost some time in there. We do have a teacher workshop day. If we wanted some continuity, we could put the teacher workshop day on the 17th and utilize that day as a, a student day. If, if that would provide a little more continuity for the students, um, but I would, I would, I would not recommend that we waive the student day. When is the teacher workshop? Uh, it's the Friday before Memorial Day. And parents are already aware that that's a, a non-student day? It's on the calendar. It's on, yeah, it's on our district calendar. So, I mean, either way, the last week's school day and one day, parents may be taking kids out, right? or they may have planned a longer weekend on the Friday. Sure. Um, I mean, switching, which was your point, Gail, I believe, right? The switching up with a uh, professional day? Um, Just postponing the day, or the professional day. Yeah, so and having, having a student day be the, the original, originally scheduled professional day. For, from my perspective as the principal who has to sort of plan those days, either day would be fine with me. Um, what we have planned for that day can either happen that day or June 17th. So you know, I, I, whatever the board wishes, we'll communicate with parents as soon as possible to let them know when the last day of school. So we haven't, so we wouldn't be losing any student time, if I'm hearing this correctly. Not if we did a switch. If we did a switch. So, and if that seems to work out better for staff, and uh, it seems so, we um, the staff have to bring it up. I, I, what do people think? I think it's more productive to, you know, end at the end of the week. For the, the last day, yeah. Um, having that Monday, it would just be, yeah, it would not be a very productive day, in, in my opinion. It's all assuming we don't lose any more days. So I'm, I'm hearing that um, the swap is all right with the board. It works out well for the uh, professional staff involved. So, uh, by consensus, you have our uh, approval to make that swap. Then that would make the last day of school for students on June 14. And we will get uh, information out to the parents that we're going to swap it with the, it's going to be a student day on that uh, May professional development day. And then the PD day for staff will be on June 17.
aware that the board has done something to recognize teachers during that week, and I just you know, didn't know if you were going to reach out to me on your own or. Uh, apparently, uh, we, we haven't yet, obviously. I, 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 added, I added to my agenda saying, oh, we forgot about Teachers Appreciation Day to have a discussion in April, but, um, and this is our last meeting before then, so I do have it under new business, but we can discuss it now. Um, we generally, so we understand that there are sort of days set up, that, and, uh, you know, the SAA, we think the SAU does something, the PTO does something, you know, the people do something, and we've had, we've had a day in the past, I don't remember what it is. What day it is? Is it Wednesday? It's usually the Wednesday. 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 Yeah. Wednesday is wide open. Wednesday is wide open. Okay. <laughs> Not anymore. Not anymore. We got right. Wednesday. So is that all I need to know? That the board will be doing something to recognize? Yes. 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 We usually take what sort of is assigned to us. That's what we've done in the past. Thank you for thank you for bringing it up, though. I, I, and I, I was I had already written it down before I read your. Uh... Yes, go ahead. So the other thing that um, I'm looking for a little bit of direction on, we do our sixth grade ceremony to recognize our sixth graders before they leave RGS. So I'm trying to set a date for that. I've held off because. We didn't know if we were going to have snow days. We didn't know when the last day of school was going to be. So now that we pretty much know those things, um, we're trying to set a date. And considering that the 14th would be our last day, we were looking at Thursday the 13th, and then having the last day be the 14th, where we do some different celebrations in the school on the last day of school. The 13th is a regular scheduled school board meeting. So, I don't know if that's happened in the past. I don't know yes, we've never, we've never how had that works. We've, we've, we've never had that happen in the past. I'm not sure. I think because, I, I think because the, the last couple of years we've had a lot more snow days and we've been later, later, we've been later in the, later yeah. in the yeah, season. I kind of wonder. Yeah. So, um, I'm just looking for a little feedback. I want to let parents know as soon as possible at date. Um, I didn't know if that was amenable to the board and to change your meeting, or if you'd rather me select a different date. Well, what other dates are? are uh, I'm starting to look. I'm going to look at the calendar here. What uh, is it usually done? Like the second to last day of school? I mean, I, again, I'm not. It really wasn't. I can't, I can't remember how it's been done in the past. We have some. Oh, staff here, so it's not. It's been all over the place, actually. Yeah, it's, not, it's usually it's usually that week. Yeah. But it's, it's not week. always yeah. the second day before. That's what it was. Well, it's 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 not just us who have to change. It right. also be the um, SAU staff who would be. Um, it, it almost feels like it's. I'm okay with selecting another day because yeah. we haven't put anything out to parents. I just didn't I didn't know if there had been any prior practice or you know if there you know some districts are very key on tradition. So that's why I'm asking. <laughs> we can't remember the tradition. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe no one else will remember either. Okay. So if the, the specific date is not set in stone, then I'm comfortable selecting. So Again, I'm, I'm looking at staff date. because essentially the board in the past has been informed okay. as to when it's happening. Okay. I'm not quite sure you're informed. Was there a reason why it wasn't on a Friday night? Don't look at us. I don't think <laughs> we, 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 we didn't do it. Do it. <laughs> well, when after that we have sixth grade recognition, the next morning they go to breakfast at Fogarty's. Yeah. So There's it's other. always been that. Okay. The best. And the awards ceremony <laughs> during the day, they stand up for that they got the night before. Yeah. So it's not always the second to the last day of school, but it's usually within a day or two. Oh, I see. 
So I'll, I'll work on yeah. finding the data. Yeah. And we'll just go to say, and the new tradition starts. <laughs> okay. It being flexible is better. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and they have to work around to everyone's other graduation, you know, like yeah. middle school, oh, yeah. high school, all of that stuff. So it, there was no set date. It just tries to right. be in that time. Right. And the board has never gotten involved in setting that. Um, you know, we get our invitation. Yeah. All that. Thank you for checking in with us. Anything else, Rich, on that? No, everything else was informational. Um, I will try to keep the board up to date. This is the time of year when a lot of the building projects and maintenance projects start to happen. Mm -hmm. um, next week, uh, Dick and his crew are going to focus on outdoor cleanup from the long winter and getting things spruced up on the playground for kids when they come back, um, cleaning, that type of stuff. But he's also already started trying to line up projects for the summer. And, He's finding it a little challenging to get people to call him back. So I will keep you up to date as we go along, um, just so that you know what's in process, what's been completed, that type of thing, as we go through the yeah. summer. It's a, I, I, I was very happy to see the update on the um, um, invention convention, and then we had a couple folks there. And that was pretty pretty neat, a fifth grader and a, and a, and a first grader, right? That's pretty neat. Yep, we had a um, huge number of students at our school invention convention this year. Um, much bigger than it had been in the recent past, and there were a few that um, chose to, you know, go on to the state convention. Um, we select the winners, you know, as it happens in the school, and then they're um, given the information if they want to go on their own to the state level, and, you know, the students and their parents did that on their own. Good experience. We get a nice smattering of information in this. It's very, it's very nice. Any other um, comments from you, Rich? Any board questions to Rich or comments? Okay. All right then. Uh, discussion items. Looks like we have Nick here with us this evening. Student rep. Um, so not a lot has happened since the 20th when we got last. Um, we did have two standardized tests as juniors. Um, did the MEA testing, which is the Maine's mandatory science testing, um, and we also had the SAT on Tuesday. That's a part of everything day. So the freshmen get to do community service outside. The sophomores get to do um, college visits, kind of just be involved and see what that's like for the first time. Juniors are lucky enough to take the SAT. <laughs> and seniors get um, a talk in the auditorium about college and um, just a whole money aspect of college. Um, and also quarter three officially ended and we are on the last quarter of the year. Um, prom is coming up May 4th. There's a college fair on May 14th, which is run by the guidance office at the high school, where they invite a bunch of colleges to come set up many like, stations, I guess, or tables, where they just give a little information about the school and hand out pamphlets to see if there's any students interested. And this year we have over 40 schools coming. Um, that's a good opportunity to just get involved with um, schools before senior year. Is that this May 14th. May. Um, next week is April break, which is exciting. <laughs> um, I have some. You could sound sports. a little bit more excited. <laughs> <laughs> that's exciting. <laughs> well, I've always sat with the like in school. Oh. <laughs>
Uh, I have a small update about the district musical idea that I've been talking oh, yes. about. Mm -hmm. um, I did send a follow-up email to Ms. West, and I heard back from her. She wanted to know, again, what the idea was. And I pretty much summed up my email from February, and I haven't heard back from her yet. All right. Well. Three days later. So, okay. I'm working on what I should do next to finally get that done. But hopefully, and I'll keep saying next week. Yes, and you had talked about working with the uh, Marshwood Board rep, too. But right, so we are working to together to, to, we're working together to set up a time where we can meet with our person instead yeah. of trying to keep going back and forth over email. Like that. Clearly that's not working out well. Um, Appreciate your persistence, yeah. however. Yes. Oh, yeah, I'm not giving up on this. <laughs>
uh, with the Marshwood Board. Uh, get together with them. We have to do it. We have to do it in May. We have to do it in May or June. We have to do it tomorrow. Um, or we could simply say we want to have this discussion, and while it's well, we know that the automatic renewal is going to take place, we'd, we'd like to discuss it and perhaps make you know, changes or whatever. A few changes if we have some to discuss with them. Anyway, have a discussion with them specifically about the contract. So we have a window, is that correct? Well, during which we can propose changes. Is that or negotiate well, or whatever? Or? Well, it will automatically extend exactly the way it's written mm -hmm. on July 1st. But that would be a time to look at it, I think, to sort of review where it is and say, well, there's a few things that need tweaking. Uh, all, every other year, we've had something about a, a, a foreign exchange student. Right. Maybe there's something we could talk with their board about, sort of an accommodation mm -hmm. um, of a way maybe we so We could have a foreign exchange student should, should we get that request again. Um, there were other things on the list, and I don't remember any of them. And the list is going to be it's not huge, I don't think. It was 50-50 uh, split of the parents, I think. We had a discussion about that at one point, like custody. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There were some questions. And thank you very much. That was so <coughs> the activity late bus, I think we're not going to bring that up again unless we have to. <laughs> and then I added um, from last meeting for, about the CTC. Uh, yes. Yeah. 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 So things like that. And looking through the contract and seeing if there's anything else, uh, it would be a time to think, all right, it's going to extend it now out to the full 10-year initial period. Um, it, it essentially gave us a chance to have an out before the 10 years was up. Right? To let them get an out or let us get an out before, the, before that time was up. Um, you know, it would be a time for us to sort of get together, see how everything's really working out, see how the boards feel both things are working, how it's working out for both communities, and the time to maybe even extend beyond if we want to. So. And again, I think I think we could make it as um, Aaron and I did meet with the uh, Marshall Chair, uh, and, and it would also be a time she even suggested, well, we could, we could even just say we want to have this meeting, but we're not going to have time to have it by July 1st, but we'll have it you know, by August 1st. And, yeah. So this was just to keep that in front of us. Probably need to schedule that. Yeah, sounds like a good idea. All right, so um, shall we try to schedule it tonight, or do you want to wait till June and try to schedule it? We do have, this is April, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know where the year has gone. Either, I mean, do we want to get some dates from the Marshwood board and then discuss yeah, it? Or we throw that out to them. Or do we want to make some dates and then throw it to them? I don't know. I, I have no preference for that. Which way it goes. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll, what I will do is I, I will drop a note. I'll keep uh, Dr. Gadomsky copied on it as well and, and, and the board just saying, you know, with Matt, we do want to meet. Uh, what kind of, you know, what works for two three dates and then yeah. we'll yeah. get back together. We'll get back together. They, are, they are just in their budget season. Their elections are in June. So, uh, uh, so they're, busy. So so they're, the, so they're kind of busy, so I'm thinking sense. probably after elections yeah. is what makes sense. So, yeah. so we'll, we'll throw that out. I will, I will be in touch with the current chair so it stays on there. Thank you for this. Okay. Next, Caroline's been sitting here so quietly waiting for all of us. And next on our agenda is sort of the, uh, the school town collaboration. So, uh, Caroline, the floor is yours for the moment. Thank you, you so much. It. Caroline Kendall, Town Administrator. And I'm here because you, you, you probably know that, that I, I have a two prongs actually, approach to this discussion. You all are, I'm sure, very aware that the police are um, having a problem with their space and the select board is trying to evaluate what to do about that, and there was a proposal to build a new police station which would include a town hall, and that developed into a lot of um, public discussion regarding the town hall and whether or not we would want to build a facility to replace it, or and, and how the town could evaluate that without knowing what the status of the building is as it stands. And, and, um, in terms of what it needs for a renovation or um, improvements, um, what the costs would be, whether we did it all at once, 
um, whether we did it piecemeal or um, whether or not it would make sense to do that at all. Um, but to get a more comprehensive understanding of its status in that way would be really helpful. And so I'm here to talk to you all because you all are about five years ahead of us in this because you did a study on this building and proposed a renovation and then came back to the idea of, you know, doing some kind of major step-by-step, -step, you know, one project or a few projects a year to sort of level out the funding approach to it but still maintain the building. So the town does not yet have an approach, but the first step is to have our building evaluated and know what its needs are and know what the cost of that uh, what the cost of those needs are. So I'm here to ask if there's a way that the school district could share with us your facilities director, what the cost would be for that, if any. Um, and, and here's where the two prongs come in. In, in one, the most immediate need is while, this, while the select board is working on a new charge for the space needs committee to evaluate options for the police station, Clearly, the town hall is going to be part of that conversation. So, you know, until that committee gets up and running, in the meantime, we need to work on evaluating the building. And so, um, could Mr. Fortier be helpful with that? Could we use him with that? And does he have the expertise we need? And by that, I'm wondering, did the school dis district not get a comprehensive engineering study before he employed a plan? Right. And so. That may be the first approach that we need to take, honestly, but, but barring that, what is his level of expertise in terms of evaluating that, that building so that we can sort of determine whether or not that would be appropriate or getting the engineering study first. So, so, so that's the more immediate need, but the second prong to this is we really don't have a facilities director. We don't have anybody who is assessing any of the town buildings and making sure that whatever they need for maintenance is happening and that it's on schedule and that the major improvements are on the town capital improvement plan. So, so each of the department heads is doing that to the best of their ability. We all know that the buildings will need a roof replaced at some point, but they're really not experts in that regard. So, so I have kind of a two-pronged question here about could we use him more immediately if that's appropriate um, in, in your mind or else um, or in addition to, could we use them in a more long-term cost-sharing way? Um, you, I don't know if the board um, is aware that our janitor, Richard Fogarty, um, he's very skilled in what he does, and he's a bit of a handyman, and he does a good job at the town hall. Um, he doesn't have this level of expertise that we're looking for, but he does fill in with the school as janitor here. And so he's on your payroll for that, but you're already recognizing his, his value in that way. So I don't know if he has more time availability or if you have other custodial staff who could maybe have more hours that could be paid for, you know, with compensation from the town or whether we're just compensating for part of Mr. Fortier's town at time or, or if there's a way to work out some kind of arrangement in either of those ways. Okay, so I, I hear that there, there are two things. One is specifically um, sort of um, town hall police needs, the, and, and you're quite correct. Uh, and, and the other one is just general uh, using um, Dick Fortier's expertise as a, as a, as a, in a, in a more ongoing way. director in a more um, general way around town and, and things like that. So you're absolutely correct. Um, the, the start to anything happening in this building was an engineering study, the IEV study, which uh, is practically, it's etched in my brain. I was that Ban Banwell or was no. that, a, that was a different No, plan. that was IBEA, -E right, thank you. I, I leave out a letter every time, IBEA, and it was a comprehensive study that we paid somewhere between ten and twenty thousand dollars for, I believe. It was comprehensive, but it was every single major system. It was everything. It was it was heating, it was ventilation, it was the kitchen, it was it was everything except uh, safety and security. It did not cover those for some reason it didn't cover those. It did cover ADA compliance, it covered all of those things. 
Um, and it was wonderful because we've been able to go back to it over and over and over again to see, it, it, and it gave us the length, the lifetime of the roof and how, or the lifetime of the furnace or the lifetime of this or that, some of which were already way, way beyond their lifetime when they did the study. And that was, that, and that gave us a talking point. So we found that to be very, very useful. Subsequent to that, as we looked into other things happening in this building, we had a number of engineers come through the building. Uh, and when we were talking about major renovations, we had, uh, we had someone come through. When we went through becoming um, an historical, uh, an actual historical site, another engineer came through. And of course, the nice thing about that was that every single one lined up saying, this is a very sound building. Whatever you do to this building will be worth it because it's a very sound building. It's not going to fall down in the next 20 years. It's, it's not going to fall down, is what they were saying. It, it's really sound. So, so, there, so we did do that first. There. And then the other part about using, I'm, I, I do not know about Dick's actual expertise in being able to do any of that. That, that would be the follow-up question because yeah. given that price tag, you know, I, I anticipate that wouldn't go over well, particularly not as a, you know, as an unbudgeted expense, and that would just delay things, and given the magnitude of that expense, that there's a good chance that would not be supported by the, the voters, you know, so, so we're going to be, like, stuck. Yeah. Now, in terms of, now, I don't know how often Dick refers to that study, but he has been, um, I mean, certainly he has and has grown his expertise in being able to look at and the reason we have not yet replaced our boilers is because he has been able to initially determine what was wrong with some of them and fix it. He has done so much of that throughout the years. He's done five or so years he's been here. I don't know if it's been quite that long. Um, he's done so, so, so the boilers are now living beyond the life determined by the engineering study? Oh, yes. They were, they were already beyond it, and now they have gone, gone even longer because he has been able figure out what was wrong with them and fix, and fix them. Excellent. Maybe I'll have to benefit from that. And there's that. much of <laughs> that. He, he worked with uh, PSNH now, uh, Eversource, um, to get, to do lighting, mm -hmm. um, inside and outside. I mean, just so many things that he's done. It's, it's, so he has that level of expertise in terms of looking at the building. In terms of sharing him to do that, that's something that we would have to have a discussion with. Um, his, we are lean. On, um, on custodians and, and, and maintenance people. We run very lean. And that had, we, we moved to that position a couple of years ago. So Dick is also a full-time maintenance and, and custodian person. So would it make sense, for, for discussion purposes, you know, in a, in a multi-year plan, not for today, would it be possible, hypothetically, to pay the school district a certain amount of money so he could be a full-time facilities director and not a custodian, which is part for the town and part for the school. And the money from the town for that purpose could be for more custodial staff for the school to compensate for that. Yeah, I think that would be an interesting discussion um, to have. And I, I, I think it's worth having the discussion. I, I sort of look now to the yeah, I mean, I think there's there, there's other communities that have done hybrids like that, um, and I, I think sharing staff. Uh, obviously, you have to look at the needs of each building. So I think Judy's right that you know to to share at this point, if it's anything longer than a day or two, it would be very difficult for us to do because we, we don't have the coverage, uh, and we utilize him in a lot of different ways. So you bring up an interesting plan to. You know, subsidize some of our funding for an additional custodial position that may be uh, shared both ways. That's an interesting idea. I understand how you're. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I was just going to ask. Do you already have like an idea of some of the things you want to do now? That are sort of the smaller projects. Smaller projects our janitor can handle, and it's less about getting the projects done, which is by itself important, and I don't mean to discount that. It's really more about the, ass the assessment and the planning and the evaluating of all the buildings, okay. um, yeah. you know, just so that we can have what you all have, which is a building plan, so that you know what your capital expense is. 
are going to be and you can forecast and you can attempt to be level funded in those, you know, year after year in those kinds of expenses and maintain your buildings appropriately so that we don't end up in a situation where you have to do a renovation because things just become so antiquated and in need of attention. So we can stay on top of things. Um, so no, you know, but who knows what we don't know, I guess, is the point, because nobody working for the town would necessarily be aware of, of what we need unless we're tripping over it. Well, I can just speak for myself. I mean, in the five years or so he's been here, uh, I, he's saved us thousands, countless thousands of dollars in things that we thought we needed to do or was able to rectify for much less. Or able to do himself, you know. Uh, he's very skilled. He seems to really be letting us know if this is something we have to look out for, you know, really kind of looking down the, down the line to see what, what's coming. And, uh, you know, it's also given us, I think, other options. If you remember, you were on, I think you were on the Budget Committee when we were first brought on the idea of, of getting a facility structure. And it was, you know, we fought for that. And, I think if the town had known at that time what a benefit it was, they would have been all in. But uh, he's, I think he's done a terrific job keeping this, keeping the school is, helping us to prolong the life of it, I suppose. You know, with the lights, everything were changed so they were more, you know, energy efficient. Mm -hmm. Little things like that. That mm -hmm. we wouldn't have been worried about, and, and the, the boilers too. That was, I think, we were really worried about that, about that for a long time. And problem solved. So yeah. I got the benefit of a of, of a tour with, of the building with him, and he was telling me about the things he's accomplished. Yeah. And in the kitchen, for example, um, and the town hall has. Um, the tile, the floor tiles are, are coming up, not just in the police station, but upstairs in some areas that have, um, get a lot of snow melt on the feet and high traffic areas has degraded the glue and the, and the tiles are coming up. But he chose a completely different tile here than, than the kind of tile in the old building, which is more like what we have at Town Hall. And so maybe the new kind of tile you all have here in the annex would be more appropriate. But we don't have somebody who thinks in those ways, who could give us perhaps more appropriate options. We would have no reason to think to do anything other than what's already there. So we want to be able to make better choices for the town if indeed the town hall is to stay. But we need to be able to answer the question for the people. Does it make sense to maintain and renovate the town hall or to build a completely new facility? So. I think that obviously the next, I, I'm not exactly sure what the next step is, but I think it is maybe getting a sense from Dick what he feels his, you know, or from, from the people he works for directly as a principal, and from, if, if he has any bandwidth at all, and then talking with him about what doing an assessment of a building would take, you know, how much time it would take, and then seeing if it's even something that we can pursue. Is that well, I, I just, I, I hate to overextend an right. employee right. Adding, adding something else to the plate. I, I, I find it an intriguing idea for the ne next budget cycle to add another shared custodial position uh, that might relieve some of that day-to-day -day pressure that at that point in time he would have some, uh, some dedicated time built into the schedule for just what you're talking about. Uh, and then in the heavy traffic times, that could that custodial position could swing whether to the school more often or to the town more often, depending on what's going on. So, I mean, I, I find that kind of an intriguing position, but uh, I think it would probably have to go through the next budget cycle. Which is fair, and I would anticipate that. And likewise, the, the select board would have to evaluate whatever that proposal is and the cost. And, and consider that amongst all the other priorities right. and so forth. The other option, if he's already stretched thin, if this is workable for your board, is um, if, if Dick felt as though he was qualified to do this and, and willing, um, if he could let your board know how long he thinks it would take to do just the town hall, to 
to evaluate that if it's if it's a two day project, for example, um, would it be helpful if we were able to offer our custodian's help if indeed he's free and can do that and and on our payroll for for that same amount of time or an extra day? I mean, their pay rates are obviously going to be different. But is is there a way that we can sort of alleviate the burden of the loss of his time to the school district so that we could borrow from him for a one time short period? Time for that purpose. Yeah. I think the first uh, discussion might be with Rich and Dick and, and, and basically asking Dick if that's something that he felt comfortable. I don't even know whether that he feels comfortable to do that or whether he feels like he has the expertise to do that. I have no idea. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Um, I just want to make sure that, you know, because time is really important on the yeah. town side so that we can propose something new to the, the voters, we hope in March that we keep the discussion moving so that we can think about all the uh, all the options all at once so that it's not a you know months long conversation if we can avoid that. Mm -hmm. Oh I think that, that um, what we could do if it's acceptable to the board, I, I'd be glad, glad to meet with Rich and Dick and have a conversation about whether it's even feasible or possible. Uh, or whether he felt comfortable doing it. Um, and then if the answer to that is yes, then we could contact you and, and see if we could spring a day or whatever might, you know, be available. Thank you. That would be great. I, mean, I, think that's acceptable to the board. I think that's acceptable. It goes to one of our goals of seeing what we can do to help up the town, and, and the town does a lot for us. But I think we need to keep it very specific that it would be uh, essentially assessing the town hall. Right. For sure, yeah, for this one-time thing, right, absolutely. For this one-time thing, yes. how he feels about doing that. And then, uh, the time and, and, and then the other prong could be another separate conversation closer to budget time, another time. Well, budget season just starts so soon. <laughs> I, I thought I'd give you a month or two anyway. <laughs> 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 so it's continual, as we know. It is. All right, so, that's, so, 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 the, so the next next thing that will happen is that you and Rich and Dick will talk some point and it, sometime in the next uh, before our May meeting. Get an update on it. I hope so. But it, let, me, let me be clearer. <laughs> 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 Only because I know, I, know, yes, I, I, know, I know how these things go uh, get off, go off, and go back. It, it, it could be another month, and another month, but we only meet once a month, so we'll sort of keep that going. Thank so. you. All right, thanks. Is there anything else? Um, all right, well, thank you. So, good. We appreciate very much your coming forward on this. So we'll see where we stand. Well, I appreciate that the board is considering this. So thank you. It's, it's new territory for us both. Well, it, it is, and, and, and to, to Dr. Gadowski's point, we, we, we certainly keep, he is stretched. He is a full-time custodian and a full-time facilities uh, person. So he, he's, he's, he does a lot. So we don't want to overstretch it. We appreciate that, yes. So thank you for that, too. All right, moving on. Um, the uh, budget update. Well, it's only been a couple of weeks since <laughs> our last update. So not much has happened, <laughs> except that we have started um, encumbering the additional funds that were um, approved at the last meeting. So mm -hmm. as of this report, we've encumbered about half. And I know today I was approving some work with so that's and, and some of that encum it, that encumbering is happening in the PR and upkeep of equipment yes. line, right? Yes. Okay. That's sort of what I saw. So yes. I sure. okay. Any questions for Katie on the budget? All right. Also, since our since our last meeting, um, there was a budget committee meeting. I hate to throw this at you. Uh, Aaron, because you stood in for our rep, but was there any update you wanted to give us on the budget committee meeting? Um, it was largely an organizational meeting just to elect the chair, um, which is John Ordway for another year, and um, Suzanne Hewitt was elected uh, vice chair, and um, there is one open seat on the budget committee. Uh, so they have uh, put out uh, feelers for letters of interest um, for people who might want to fill that position. And then the budget committee is meeting with all those folks on the 24th to interview them um, and 
someone to appoint that vacancy. And uh, I think that was about uh, about the 24th of April. Correct. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next up is the front step court. The the we don't have one. Uh, <laughs> we've got, um, <laughs> we've been working on, on quotes, uh, getting not only quotes for the cupola to get that uh, work scheduled for the summer and front steps to get that done sooner than that. It's been very difficult. Uh, I've talked to Rich and, and Dick, and, and Dick's working hard to get those quotes in. Um, but the way the workforce is going now, and people are right out straight, it's very difficult to get those. So we don't have one at this point. I guess I would I would um, ask the board what you remember. We were talking about the, doing the front steps out of this year's budget, which means we literally need to work on them before July 1st. So, at the very earliest we could bring you a quote would be um, next meeting in May if we can get it returned by then, which means that we would have to get commitment for somebody to do work in June, mm -hmm. end of June. Uh, I guess I just want to put that on your radar because when we come to the next meeting, if we're going to move forward with that particular piece, we'll have to do it rapidly. It's good to know that. I mean, it would be nice, of course, to have more than one quote, but we're also understanding that it's very really difficult getting any quotes, it sounds like. So. I can give you a little update. I did talk with Dr. Ganofsky today, and Dick had somebody come in today to look at the steps and do an assessment, um, and we get quotes a bit next week. Mm -hmm. uh, but he does have two other people that he's called. I think one of them is scheduled to come in next week. To look at it and give a quote, okay. um, and hasn't heard back from the third one. So he is looking so at all like the people. Mm -hmm. At least one, hopefully at least two, possibly three. Okay. And I think we had a ballpark figure on, yeah, somewhere on that. And um, anyway, we'll just have to see how quickly that goes. And, um, I think we're all aware that time is of the essence on that. So thank you. Moving on, uh, the school board retreat discussion is basically on here just so that we uh, deter so that we talk about when we might want to have it. So this last we had a retreat after Dr. Donati was hired, so that we could do it with him and it was done in the summer, which which set and basically the goals are not for a board year, which goes from March to March, because that's when the elections are, but for the school year. So. Summer is a good time to do it, if that works for people. So we don't have to... And then again, we can keep moving tonight, because we won't have to do anything tonight. But what do other people think about it? We've done it, we've done it. We've done it in the summer, we've done it in the summer. We'll work out some days, we'll figure out. Okay, but we'll aim toward a summer coming. Okay. Okay. All right, we'll use it. is the first reading of the policies, the student conduct, uh, uh, H, uh, JIC student conduct, and uh, JICD student conduct discipline and due process. These are um, so the, uh, the last two policies, I think, of this, of this policy round. Uh, the first one is, is recommended. The second one is required by law. So. Um, First of all, uh, so questions, comments, concerns about either of those on the first reading. Should we just move forward on the second one if it's required? And yeah, we, 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 we pretty much as a board have, have always adopted um, the recommended and the required. But this is the first reading, we will take that vote. Actually, next month, or we'll, we'll actually wait and take that vote next year. Yeah, we, 
Vermont for second reading next month. I did, I did talk, kind of like the, 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 the spelling out that the board will see the student handbooks. I, I wasn't sure because I know that I have never seen a student handbook. So in one of the, in the uh, JIC, it's noted that the board will see the student handbooks. Okay, so I think that's very nice. You all may have seen them because you're parents. So um, <laughs> as a non-parent board member, I've never seen them. Uh, and now, uh, I had added to, to the new business um, teacher appreciation. So I know in the past we've done a number of things. We've done cupcakes, we've done, I don't know, some balloons. There were balloons in one year. There were you know, all sorts of things. So um, I, I, I think we should authorize the, uh, do you think uh, Andrea and Emily can do it? Can you handle it? You've been doing it for a few years now. Yeah, it's done the bulk of it, I have to and say. She, yes. Well, because she's not here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. How, what do you want to do? What do you want your to do? Lucky day. So, I, as a, as, by consensus, the board will just authorize um, you all to move forward with that. And we'll, meet. we'll make sure to share a plan with you before we go through with it. So. All right. And I. Uh, Depending on the thing. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be see. around to help if necessary. Can you help also? Yeah. Great. <clears throat> All right, we are now up to um, appointing the withdrawal committee. So the first thing we need to do is appoint the school board members, and then we'll go uh, forward as a board. And uh, it's nice to see, I, I see quite a few people, I believe, because there are a lot of faces I'm not used to seeing here tonight. <laughs> Um, who are here. That's really nice. Um, we had a remarkable, um, a really remarkable response, and I, we were a little bit overwhelmed by it. So, good way. It had a, in a very good way. Um, it was really heartening to get the responses we got, and, and everyone, everyone who responded brings something to the table. So we'll, we'll move forward first by um, appointing the uh, school board members. We'll, we'll sort of go through. We, we went through part of the process last time and then realized we didn't want to. It was too early to appoint. So we're going to appoint tonight. So um, the school board members first. So nominate. Yeah, no, we have to do nominations. I, uh, it, it's an, I believe it's an appointment from the board chair. I wonder from the board chair, so this is awkward. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I'm appointing myself, and I'm also appointing Aaron Cavanaugh. So, Aaron and I, Aaron, <laughs> Aaron and I will be the uh, school board reps on the uh, withdrawal. And now we go into, um, into, uh, appointing four members, so I don't know, four, four, member, four community members, and again, I can't say really just how wonderful it was to get everybody responding. We had 11 people, I think, in total respond, um, eight or nine sent the follow-up bio, which was just fantastic, I mean, really, it, it, it's, it's just amazing, and whether or not you get appointed tonight, we hope everyone who's replied will absolutely stay involved. All the meetings will be public. Uh, we, there'll, be, there'll be time for comment and, and talking with the actual committee. So we can only take four by law. We can only take four. Otherwise, we take <laughs> um, So we had a, had a bit of an, an idea that in order to make it as completely objective as possible, that we would simply take the first four who, who replied and sent in bios, the follow-up on it. Um, that was one of the things um, I was thinking about. Are there other thoughts about how we might go about I mean, there, we can go about this in many different ways, but uh, other thoughts from folks on how we might go about it. That's really. I mean, we can, yeah, yeah. We can also, um, I know. Um, I, I understand that that way of 
looking at it. I, I also appreciate that um, one person that wrote in has some experience with this situation before. I don't believe it was one of the first four, if I'm understanding the way the documents laid out. That is correct. So I, um, I think that would be valuable input.
that. So, uh, are those four? Are those four here tonight? All four here, here tonight? One, two, three. Of you are. Okay, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Who's not here? Shelly. Shelly. Is there a Shelly in there? Shelly is not here. <laughs> okay. You're all willing to, to serve still. The three that are here. Yes. All right. We'll be in touch with Shelly. Um, should anyone, should Shelly not be willing, willing to, to serve now that she's been, um, if we're going to go ahead and win, um, which we are, um, we'll, we'll, we'll let other folks know. I, I, I can't, I will say this like 500 times in the next three minutes if I can. I hope that all of you will stay involved. Um, people who are new in town, uh, like Mike, who I met at a couple of meetings, and I was very happy to see his name come through. I would love to see him stay involved and hopefully make it to some of the meetings. Um, because we do now have your email address. <laughs> <laughs> and you will be personally invited to come to, <laughs> have you in the group or in to, to, come to, to definitely to attend the meetings um, as, 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 and bring a uh, comment to us. All right, do you need an official motion to appoint them? Um, are you going to do the budget committee member as well? Oh, and the budget committee, yes, I'm sorry. The budget <laughs> committee member has been named, and it's Joe Desch. Thank you all very much. Yes, thank oh, you. can't thank you enough. It was truly an overwhelming, it, it, I mean, in, in such a wonderful way that people really stepped up to come do this. And as many of you noted, this is a very important decision <laughs> Uh, that we have to make. What is going to be best for us going forward? And how we are we are in this position because Summersworth took the first step, and and uh, we we then sought legal counsel who said really for, for Rollins for to make sure you're doing what's best for Rollins for you too should start a withdrawal committee. So that's why we're doing this. Um, and here we are, and we're going to move forward. And with everyone's help, we will. Uh, Hopefully, this committee will come up with a really good plan to see us into the future. So, thank you very much. Don't need to anything for No, they've been for me. Thank you all. And thank Aaron for a lot of the. Uh, yeah. Very much. Yeah. Yeah. And the uh, last old business item uh, is just about the sixth grade student discussion. Just want to make sure that everybody's fully aware that we are still keeping that. But we are. Uh, we are looking forward to having a forum, to building a forum for uh, probably later in the summer, early in the fall, so that we can uh, have a public forum, uh, hear from experts, um, just sort of start looking at that uh, as, the, as the warrant article uh, asked us to do. Uh, and we have, we did double check uh, with the attorney, and it is definitely advisory, uh, partly, partly because, you know, look into this, but there was no money given to do it. So, I mean, so that's another reason to be even more advisory, so to speak. So, um, we we'll check with the attorney, but we're going forward anyway to do the research on, uh, get some of the uh, research on that done. All right. Uh, I, we have an action item. Uh, earlier this evening, we talked about um, nomination of staff. So, I will take a, a, a motion. Um, um, I don't have it in front of me. The, uh, to, to accept the nomination of staff as presented to us earlier. I move to accept the nomination of staff as presented. So, for the second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay. So that's done. Um, future meetings, uh, May 9th is our next school board meeting, June 13th. Um, is, there, is, uh, um, is there one after that? We also, on, on May 6th, we have an SAU board meeting, and Tom, at which point Tom will be replaced as chair. He's mm -hmm. counting the days. <laughs> April vacation starts next week. Um, you can see the other dates in there. Um, any other events that need to be mentioned? Uh, closing comments by visitors. So, you yeah, there's a little um, four, five, six Washington Street.
Will the sixth graders transition be part of your contract negotiations? Is that on the list? I'm not sure what that means. Like the talking to Marshall to see what they need if we were to do that in the next several years. I mean, they need lead time. So I understand we're just looking at it now. But would you consider having a conversation with them to figure out how much lead time do they need? What, how does that affect our contract rate? How does that affect the busing? How does that, all the things that go into that. Because as an informed voter, I'd like to know how much is that going to raise our overall school budget? How much is it going to affect the services that are provided to the kids here? Good point. I I've added it to the list, oh, thank you. As, and just to make it clear to everyone, it's already in the contract that we can send our sixth graders at, at, at any point in time once we determine. But I, I, your point about what's the lead time kind of thing, well takes it. Any other comments by visitors? All right, well, thank you all very much for coming. Thank you for, again, all the people who are here who responded uh, to, to and wanted to be part of the withdrawal committee. We hope you will all stay engaged and uh, look forward to working with everyone else, the other, the other four that have been appointed this evening. Thank you very much. Thank you.